I'm Massachusetts Senate President Karen Spilka and a resident of Metro West for over 35 years. I'm proud to represent the municipalities of Ashland, Framingham, Franklin, Holliston, Hopkinton, Medway, and Natick. Welcome to my virtual Senior Health and Wellness Fair. Each fall, I offer an in-person health and wellness fair visited by hundreds of seniors in the Metro West area. Because of the COVID pandemic, we could not offer the fair this year in person. But thanks to the partnership of our local public access channels and the wonders of the internet, we are bringing the fair directly into your homes today. In the next hour, we will be featuring experts to help you manage your physical and mental health during the pandemic. You'll learn about services and resources available to seniors and we'll enjoy the sights and sounds of our community. Most importantly, during the next hour, you will know that you are not alone. Even though this pandemic has made each of us feel isolated at times, your community is here to help you overcome that isolation and stay connected. My first guest is an expert on overcoming the loneliness that many seniors may feel right now. Two years ago, Sandra Harris organized the statewide task force to end loneliness and build community. Since she was named the volunteer president of AARP Massachusetts in 2018, Sandra has worked with organizations across the Commonwealth and with hundreds of her fellow seniors to develop the best ways to overcome loneliness. Before joining AARP Massachusetts, she owned an interior design business specializing in senior living design. Sandra, you devote yourself to helping seniors overcome social isolation. Your work has never been more important than it is right now. Thank you so much for joining us today to share your story and insights. Thank you, Senate President. Greetings. I'm honored to be with you today on behalf of our 760,000 members throughout the Commonwealth. I bring warm greetings. And I thank you for including AARP Massachusetts in today's exciting program. Of particular interest at today's health and wellness fair is the public health crisis, loneliness and social isolation. Even before the pandemic, we witnessed this epidemic in older adults. With the convergence of this pandemic, a growing number of people of all ages it's not affected. Many of us are spending time alone, isolated from and missing loved ones and friends. According to a recent study, two thirds of adults are now suffering from social isolation. It has never been more urgent to find solutions to this public health epidemic. That is why AARP Massachusetts took leadership in creating the Massachusetts Task Force to end loneliness and build community. Working with the AARP Foundation and UMass Boston, we have mobilized partners from all sectors of the Commonwealth and have invited them to join forces with us for greater impact. Our shared goal is to ensure that every older adult in Massachusetts feels connected to the community and enjoys strong social well being. As a result of this collaboration, we have launched a public awareness campaign Reach Out MA, a call to action to base staters to reach out and save ways to loved ones, neighbors, and especially older adults living alone. Our message to them, to remember, it's the little things that can make a big difference in someone's life. We also released, it's the little things, a toolkit of simple, actionable ways communities throughout the Commonwealth are fostering connections and building community in their local areas. 
going forward, the task force is exploring equal access to internet connections, affordable devices, and the training necessary to address this digital divide, especially for older adults, and adding intergenerational lens and perspectives to our work, emphasizing the value, wisdom, and experience of older adults and how blending these with other generations is a win for all. Social isolation and loneliness are complex, multi-dimensional issues, and solving them is going to require all of our efforts. And there are a few things that you can do. First of all, remember, you are not alone, and there's a lot you can do to cultivate your own social well-being. You can stay strong with proper nutrition, exercise, and staying as active as you can by finding ways to ground yourself to deal with things that are happening in your life. This can be done in the form of meditating and believing in something greater than self or finding something to be thankful for every day. You can also take the time to honor your wisdom and strength. Reflect on your life journey and all the wisdom you have gained along the way. Appreciate your value and all you have to offer, no matter your age. Adding purpose and meaning to your life can also make a difference. Develop a reason to get up in the morning. What have you always wanted to do in life, but life got in the way? Now, perhaps it's the time to do that. Perhaps it's the book you have always wanted to write our time to research and document your family's roots. And if you don't have some lofty purpose project, just remembering to enjoy the small pleasures is a habit worth cultivating. Having a warm cup of coffee, exchanging a safe hug, these tiny moments when present and enjoyed can provide a source of satisfaction to both body and brain. Reach out and make connections. Reach out to loved ones, friends, and neighbors you've not heard from. Create a call tree or letter writing campaign. Need ideas? You can visit reachoutma.com to see the examples of the 10 small ways from our campaign. The AARP's Foundation Connect to Effect platform also provides a variety of resources. If you need help finding others with whom to connect, an excellent resource is AARP's Community Connections, a tool at aarpcommunityconnections.org to help you find a group in your area. And if you just need someone with whom to talk, you can request a friendly call from an AARP volunteer through the website or by calling one 888-281-0145. I encourage you to embrace technology. Learn to use virtual platforms on a smartphone or tablet. Studies show that the next best thing to an in-person interaction is video chat because facial cues, body language, and other nonverbal forms of communication are important for bonding. Try having a virtual Thanksgiving dinner if you can't gather with loved ones this year. Share recipes and menus and eat together on a Zoom, Zoom call. Assist your grandchildren with homework. If you're technologically talented, you could always take an online class. Volunteering is another powerful way to reduce loneliness. Volunteering your time and energy not only helps your community, it also has important emotional and physical benefits. Perhaps you can reach out to your community leaders and share your wisdom and ideas on how your community can become more age-friendly and join our age-friendly network. And lastly, you can renew your social contract by taking the Good Neighbor Pledge with a goal of becoming a more connected and caring community member, to be a person who lives with kindness and concern for your neighbor. Remember, 
good neighbors who stay connected make great neighborhoods. The coronavirus pandemic has captured all of our attention and reminds us that human connections can spread illness. But we also understand the importance of human connections to well being. For most of us, hopefully, this crisis will be the experience of a few months. Yet, we know that for many older adults living alone, it's a way of life. I believe we will survive this crisis. My hope is that we all arrive on the other side, a more connected, caring, and compassionate society. I wish you good health, meaningful connections, strong communities, and always the ability to choose how you live as you age in the Commonwealth. Thank you again for including AARP Massachusetts in this conversation. Thank you, Sandra, for all your work on behalf of seniors throughout Massachusetts. To hear other tips, we'll now turn to another group of experts on this topic. They are your local friends and neighbors. I asked each of them, how do you stay connected to your community? Hi, my name is Mary McGill and I live in Ashland and my go-to place during these trying times of the pandemic has been the Callahan Center. They have kept me fit, informed, and culturally enlightened. I volunteer at a local food pantry and for an after-school program and with this last year food insecurity and remote learning have stepped up those activities. I stay connected to my community by joining the Facebook group Clean Up Framingham. I grab my gear, I take a walk, and I pick up trash. It's a fun and safe way to clean up your community and stay connected to your peeps. I stay connected to my community by volunteering here at the Natick Senior Center, providing pick up and go meals. You should volunteer too. Do something great for yourself, do something good for your town. We need you. I stay connected to my community by creating public art. I stay connected to my community by volunteering at the library at the Natick Senior Center. Because the, the Senior Center is closed right now, we have a little uh, outside cart where you can come and pick up your favorite authors. Hi, I'm Evie, and I've been remaining connected with my community through volunteer work at the Callahan Senior Center in Framingham. I facilitate a group of seniors with varying degrees of vision loss. In this manner, we've all been able to remain supportive of each other and stay connected with one another during this difficult time. Our seniors are full of experience and wisdom, and we treasure them with care. For my part, I greet them when they take a stroll at the farmer's market. I reach out to them by phone, by email, with community health-related updates. To learn more about programs that serve and connect seniors every day, I've invited three leaders in our community to join me for a conversation. First, Eileen Davis is the director of Call to Talk, a statewide service based at United Way of Tri-Counties Framingham office. Call to Talk is a terrific helpline available 24-7 that provides compassionate and confidential listening to assist people, including those who may be despondent or considering suicide during stressful times. Yumi Park is relatively new to Metro West. Yumi directs Framingham State University's Arts and Ideas program for adults, offering lectures and classes that keep your brain engaged and your horizons expanding, even when you are restricted to your residence. Andrea J. Weaver is a globally recognized intergenerational specialist, helping people unite older adults and youngsters in families and community. She founded Bridges Together, and her programs are being used across the country and beyond. 
Welcome to all of you, and thank you so much for joining me today. Eileen, I'm going to start with you and ask a question, uh, if that's okay. What would you say to someone who is reluctant to call, call to talk, perhaps because of the stigma about reaching out for help, which we all know still exists, or because they aren't used to talking with people they don't know? Well, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk about Call to Talk, one of my favorite subjects. You know, it's a good question. Uh, when people are going through a difficult time, it is hard to figure out and be brave enough to reach out and call a number that you've never called before and talk to someone that you have never spoken to before and can't even see. But when you do reach out to Call to Talk, whether you're an older adult or you're someone that care, is caring for an older adult, anyone across the lifespan, what you can expect to hear on the other end of the phone is a compassionate, non-judgmental person that will be there for you and meet you where you're at. Just unconditionally and non-judgmentally be there for you, actively engage with you, to hear from you and find out what it is that is challenging for you at this time. You know, so many people do suffer from, whether it's a type of diagnosable mental illness or they're going through a difficult time, but that currently there is absolutely no one that is exempt from feeling isolated, disconnected, you know, whether you, even if you, whether you have friends and family, it's very difficult to even see them right now. So we're fielding a lot of calls from people that actually do have strong supports. They're just really separated from them right now. And feelings of isolation and disconnectedness are actually contributing now to loss of memory and um, loss of thinking and cognitive thoughts, it's really important to reach out to lines like ours where there will be a trained call taker on the other end who will meet you, like I said, exactly where you are and be there for you and then encourage you to call back again and, and hear your stories and hear what's on your mind and validate any type of pain you're experiencing. It's hard. It's hard, I think, for all of us, some more than others, and particularly for our older populations, it's hard uh, if they haven't been seeing friends and family as well. So thank you so much. Call to Talk is such a tremendous asset for not only Metro West, but the state. So thank you so much. Andrea, right now, some seniors are feeling like they don't have much to offer. Of course, I don't agree, and I know you don't either. Could you please give us some examples of what seniors have to offer to the younger generations and their communities as a whole? Thank you. Thank you for having me, and thank you for letting me share. I think that we need to think about interdependence. It's really one of the values that's been woven into our country. Think about the frontiersmen. When a new person came, they helped bring, build a barn and set up a home and a cabin and all of that. We're meant to be interdependent. And I think older adults can offer that to their, to their families and to their neighbors. So maybe a grandchild runs an errand for them, a teenage grandchild or a college age grandchild, and then they cook a meal or cook their favorite cookies like that. Um, maybe for their grandchildren's family, they can provide tutoring or there's other ways, even just to write an encouraging note or send a bottle of wine to an adult child who's just like struggling to try to keep it all together with kids learning at home. They, older adults are the wisdom keepers, right? Share the wisdom, write notes that share your experience, a time you were resilient. So also... Older adults tend to be the culture keepers. What's most important in your culture? What's the golden nugget of these holidays? And how can you recreate that? So if you usually make the, a special dish, can you offer a cooking class? Can you share a recipe that way? Share your spirituality. Grandparents' spirituality has a huge impact on their grandchildren. So that's another way. Share the gift of reading. Books are always great. That's great advice. Yeah, one of my friends uh, started reading to her grandchild every Sunday morning just to keep that connection via Zoom or, you know, right. but it's to, to keep some connection there. Exactly. It's, hard. it's hard. So that's, those are wonderful tips. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. I wasn't even thinking of some of them. So that's great. That's great. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thank you. Good. You me, educational institutions are called communities of learning. 
How does art and ideas help participants feel like part of a community? Thank you so much for inviting uh, me to introduce about the program. Uh, the Arts and Idea program at Frankenman State University is an ongoing series of events that includes lectures, exhibitions, movie screenings, and performances. Almost all the events are free and open to the public. The mission of Arts and Idea series is to enrich the minds of the FSU and Frankenman communities through presenting creative and intellectual experience from diverse perspectives. So how can we provide diverse perspectives in our program? So within input from all across of the university, we developed events that emphasize the social, political and cultural issues that are relevant to all of our community members. The so theme of this year's event is the public self, the citizen as a change agent. The reason that we choose this specific theme is because of the election of 2020 that we are currently experiencing. So we hope that this specific theme would promote discussion of our roles in society, including locally, nationally, and globally. We are all from different backgrounds and participate in different ways. So how we participate in community makes us who we are. Thank you so much. In our remaining time, I'd like to hear from either of you about the impact of services and the ideas that you've shared with us today. I can start. I think that intergenerational, sometimes people think about like nursing homes and daycare in um and daycare centers but intergenerational really is a lens with which we can approach any activities and so i'm working with a community now that we're looking at training older adults and young people to provide mental health support or art programs that unite the generations and in doing so we really can weave together society and increase understanding i can go next probably so Arts and idea usually, you know, um, the held the event itself was held in you know campus only. However, now everything is virtually you know uh, mm -hmm. conducted. So all this you know um, the community members you know whoever feels trapped inside of their home can connect it and enjoy and then also you know feel a part of this conversation, intellectual conversation, that we can actually increase our experience in this diverse way. That's great, that's great. The more people participate, the less isolated and hopefully the less depressed and uh, social isolation they'll feel. So thank you so much. The three of you bring such incredibly valuable insights to your work, Eileen, Yumi, Andrea, thank you so much for sharing them with us today. We all know that your physical health affects your mental health, and even more so as we grow older. We also know that exercise is revitalizing, both mentally and physically. No matter the current state of your health or where you are living, 82-year-old exercise instructor Shirley Ariano will show you how to put some movement into your day. Hi, my name is Shirley Ariano. I am 82 years old. I've taught exercise classes for over 52 years, and I love what I do. I'm going to do some chair exercises that I would like to have you enjoy watching and maybe you can join me. Exercise makes you feel so good. And I'd like to share this with you. We will be counting. So let's take a big deep cleansing breath. Inhale the body up and breathe the body out. Always remember, take wonderful big deep breaths with your lungs, fill them up completely, and then breathe out all that air. And let's take one more big deep breath. I don't care where your arms go. They can't go all the way up. Just bring them where you can. And then we're going to reach right arm and left arm. And bend the elbows and reach up. 
And we're loosening up our spine. We're loosening up our shoulder. We're going to do eight and seven and six and five and four and three and two. Now I'm going to cross my arms, left arm and right arm and three and four and five and six and seven. I go to the front of the waistline and the core and three and four, breathe five and six and seven. Let's go one more time. Up for eight, seven and six. Keep breathing. It's four more, three more, two more. Let's cross those arms. One and two, three. Bend those elbows and gently relax those hands. Nice and easy from the waist. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven. Give me a soft twist to the right, twist to the left. Three and four. Here's five, here's six, here's seven. Let's do eight more right around the middle. Two and three and four. Breathe. Five, six, seven. Hands go on the shoulders. Turn it to the right, turn it to the left. Elbows are down. Breathe. Five, six, seven, and eight. Coat hanger arms. Two, three, four. Here's five, six, seven. We frame our face. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now single finger to single finger. Two and three and four. Here's five, six, seven, and eight. Catch more fingers. You feel the rib cage, you feel the waistline, you feel your core, you feel that wonderful flexibility. Here's the wrist that I'm holding on to. It's five, it's six, it's seven. Now I go to the other wrist. I'm loosening up. I'm getting my body feeling nice and happy inside. Seven and eight. Now I frame one and two and three and four. Breathe out, breathe in and six and seven, let's go coat hang arms. We're coming back down, two, three, and four. Here it's five, six, seven, find those shoulders, and it's one, two, three, and four. Breathe, five, six, seven, let's find those hips. One, two, go to the side, directly to the side. It's five, it's six, it's seven. Now we're sliding down, one, two, three, and four. Here's five, six, seven, and back to the hips. One and two, three and four. Here's five, six, seven. Now soft turn to the right and the left and the right and the left. Four more. One and two and three. Now take your left arm and cross right in front of you, waist height. Four more. One, two, Three, I'm going to go to the left. Same exercise. I want nice shoulders back, chest lifted, nice and easy breath. Back to the front. It's one and two. We're moving very nicely, loosening up, making everything feel so good. Let's go to the right. One and two and three and four. Here's five and six and seven. Now I go back to the center and instead of going waist height, I'm going eye height. Two, three, four. This is a little bit harder, but you can do the waist if you wish. Let's lift to the side. One, two, and three, and four. I feel so good now. I hope you start getting into the habit of moving a little bit more, stand up a little more frequently, holding on, and slide down, 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 down. Five, six, seven. Eight. Now take a generous breath. Inhale the body up and breathe the body out. Take your right arm, bring it across and just press to stretch out those shoulders. Oh, this feels so good. Change arms, bring the other arm across and just press. You want to stretch out the shoulder girdle. Always pull in the tummy button. Squeeze that middle. Take another breath. During my classes over the years, I have said, if you rest, you rust. Just keep on moving. Get that body feeling just so wonderful with a little bit of exercise. And I'll, again, I'll say, if I can do it, you can do it. Now let's go on down. Let's give ourselves a hug and a pat. 
It was awfully nice sharing my little time with you. Let's reverse. It gives a little bit of a pat. Make it a good habit. Start moving a little bit more. You will sleep better. You will feel better. And you will be able to enjoy life. It's quality that we're looking for. And in the meantime, one, make one cleansing breath up and breathe it out. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you very much. Enjoy the day. It was a wonderful, wonderful time we had together. Bye-bye. Metro West is such a special place, partly because seniors in our community help each other out. And Shirley is a strong example of that. So is Peter Egan of Holliston. As a longtime volunteer for Telecheck, Peter spends his days checking in with isolated older adults living at home. Hi, I'm uh, Peter Egan. Uh, I've been associated with uh, Elder Care Telecheck now for, since its inception for more than 10 years. This is basically a service that brings together seniors with other seniors uh, on the telephone uh, one or two times a week. We who are on the uh, calling end are trained listeners uh, who have usually been trained on a crisis line. So uh, besides being able to offer friendship and companionship, we're also able to recognize warning signs in people who are, have become isolated to the point where they are in danger. So we're able to recognize these things. But for the most part, it's a uh, uh, more of a lighthearted thing. It's a just a conversation between friends who develop relationships over time. It gives us an opportunity to really help each other. And as a spiritual guru once said, we're all just walking one another home. So uh, this is my way of doing this. And along with my companions, I think we are providing a valuable service. Nicole Fusco is the founder of Transitions Counseling in Franklin. She has years of experience counseling seniors, and lately she has been seeing and hearing about many struggles, struggles that may ring familiar to you, situations perhaps similar to yours or to those of your friends or family members. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. I'm grateful to be here and talk with you about three self-care tips during this difficult time we're in. As Senate President Spilka mentioned, my name is Nicole and I am a licensed independent clinical social worker and the founder of Transitions Counseling Services. We are a local behavioral health private practice group and we work with clients of all ages, including many seniors and older adults, just like yourself. We see clients in the context of couples, family, individual, as well as group counseling services. My goal in this segment is to reduce the stigma of seeking services and to offer skills to self-care. I'm passionate about supporting our community and I'm an advocate of seeking support. So my first self-care tip is just that, seeking support. There's a variety of ways to seek support. One is by reaching out to a group like ours. There are many local practices. Currently, groups like ours are conducting virtual therapy sessions, ours included, which I'm sure you're thinking, eek, no more technology, I don't know how to use it. Well, at our practice, and I'm sure at others, we help make sure that you understand the platform and feel comfortable for your first appointment. And should you not have the technology or the internet to support virtual appointments, we conduct the sessions through a traditional phone call. Now is a great time to seek private practice services because the insurance companies, Medicare and all other plans, are covering therapy in this mode of treatment, whereas historically they have not. We see many clients reaching out to us for a variety of reasons. As I'm sure you can anticipate, there has been a significant increase in depressive and anxious symptoms lately. We have clients reaching out, seeking skills to better manage those feelings. Reaching out for the, because of the inability to see loved ones. The inability to engage in regular daily activities, such as attend senior center events, volunteer, even attend church or religious services. We're seeing distress with increased isolation and loneliness which I know our keynote speaker spoke about. We're also talking with clients about retirement, both those who have been forced to retire early because it's unsafe for them to return, as well as those that planned retirement and it looking drastically different than they expected. 
In therapy, we would come up with ways to have interaction and social and mental stimulation. Some suggestions, and maybe you could start with one today, is to do a crossword puzzle, read, play games, set a small goal every day. Doesn't need to be a big one. It might be go for a walk outside, have three meals that day, wake up at a particular time, even get dressed. Set a routine, regular meetings with friends and families, just to name a few. So make a call, talk to someone and reach out for support. You don't need to go through this alone. And it doesn't need to be a therapy practice. Maybe call your minister or clergy, contact your primary care office. They often have therapists or other affiliated services that they can refer you to. There's no threshold for reaching out for services. Any reason is a good reason. My second tip for self-care is setting healthy boundaries. Now I know we hear boundaries and we cringe, right? Really uncomfortable. However, setting healthy boundaries is a form of self-care. We see clients struggle with who to have in their circle, what family or friends to have around or see. Even having to make that choice is a difficult and distressing one. So be thoughtful about your choices. And remember, there is no right or wrong. Try not to make a choice out of guilt or fear of hurting someone else's feelings. It's okay to say something is not comfortable and to offer an alternative suggestion. So how do we set a healthy boundary? My suggestion is to follow this formula. Four steps. First, use I statements instead of you statements. Be clear. State the facts. Don't assume that the person knows how you feel or can read your mind. Offer a solution. And lastly, reaffirm appreciation of the relationship. So an example of what this might look like, I'll use myself as one, is oftentimes our older children may want to tell us what to do, where to go, who to see, right? And say you want to go to the market and your daughter says, I don't want you to go out. And she says, send me your grocery list and I'll get the things for you and I'll drop them by the, by the house. You can say something like, thank you so much for your willingness to do that. And I'm aware of the precautions I need to take. And I plan to wear a mask and be mindful with my hands. I'll give you a call when I get home and let you know how it went. I know you worry about me and I love you for taking such good care of me. Instead of, I can do that. I can go wherever I want. Leave me alone. I need to get out of this house, right? So that's an example of following the boundary formula. Helps us feel more in control in an out of control situation. And the last self-care tip is being kind to ourselves. Really being mindful of self-judgment and self-defeating and negative thoughts. We often are very critical of ourselves and how we might handle a particular situation. We may worry during this time that I might call too much and be a burden to family or friends. The last thing that I hope you can step away from this segment with is self-compassion. Send yourself empowering and positive thoughts, such as, I am resilient. I am loved. Science shows that positive thoughts enhance our immune system. So be intentional and cognizant of our thoughts to improve our overall health and wellness. Most importantly, be forgiving of yourself. We forgive others and we don't judge. Yet things we say to ourselves in our own minds, we would never say to someone we love. So when you're feeling down, take a minute, journal what you're thinking about, the thoughts that you're having, and ask yourself, would I say this to my friend or loved one? And if the answer is no, then we shouldn't say it to ourselves. Practice kindness and non-judgment with ourselves. Much easier said than done, I know. But bringing awareness to our thoughts is the first step towards positive change. I want to thank you for listening to me today and hope that you found some of what I share, shared resonated with you and also gave you a few skills to practice self-care and compassion. Remember that you are loved, resilient, and empowered more than it feels. And don't hesitate to seek support. Nicole, thank you for bringing us those stories and suggestions as you may know, I have long worked to erase the stigma attached to talking about mental health. In 2020, I was proud to launch a statewide behavioral health campaign to encourage people to seek assistance, to help each other, and to erase the stigma. Here's a quick look at the Coping During COVID TV spot we produced. What if someone you know was struggling to cope? What if we all reached out and found a way to help? What if a text became a call, a chance to feel, to heal, to be there? What if we were someone's lifeline, someone's comfort, someone's reason to smile? 
What if by being there, we could all feel better? What if? At the beginning of this show, I mentioned the Senior Health and Wellness Fair that my office hosts at Keefe Tech High School each year. Live music performed by the Holliston-based big band, the Tune Timers, is always a favorite part of that fair. And so we just couldn't do this without them. Please enjoy the Tune Timers now, along with some of the sights of our picturesque community. We're called the Tune Timers. And that's a name that George and I figured out a long time ago. Hearing the tune timers reminds me to make time for the things that make me happy. That simple act of being mindful is actually a skill we can all employ. Here's Ashland resident Lisa Campbell, whose mindfulness classes can be viewed at Framingham's Callahan Center and other senior centers. What do you pay attention to most in life? because what you pay attention to grows and what you pay attention to can show you what you value most in life. The mindful living program that I've been bringing to local senior centers, we've learned that mindful awareness is the ability to find and focus upon restful experiences and creating relaxation. Finding and focusing on positive experiences and nurturing positivity. We can even use our mindful awareness to anchor or ground ourselves during really challenging experiences. And the more that we do that, the quicker we recover from those challenges, what we would call resiliency. We learn to meet life right where we are and meet life just as it is so that we can respond more appropriately. Ultimately, with mindful awareness, what I've experienced and many who meditated with me is that there is a sense of well-being that always, always remains, despite what's happening all around us. Mindful awareness is cultivating three attentional skills. The first is concentration. 
That's your ability to place your attention on what you deem relevant. Sensory clarity. That's the ability to track in real time what your experience is. And equanimity is an attentional skill of meeting life right where you are, right where life is, with an open mind, with an open heart, with a sense of acceptance. So how do you practice mindful awareness? Well, with mindful awareness, we begin to notice this body is a sensory vehicle. If I begin to pay attention to my experience, I can notice the outer environment. For example, I can see right now as I look around my room, I can notice colors and shapes, photographs of people that I love. If I pay attention to my outer environment, what I'm hearing right now is the passing traffic and sounds from the next room. If I pay attention to how my body feels in the outer environment, I can feel my feet being supported by the floor. I can feel a coolness on my face. And I can feel that my body is relatively relaxed. Now, I can also pay attention to the inner environment. And this is where it gets really neat. So on the outer environment, I can see, I can hear, and I can feel. Same on the inner environment. If I close my eyes, I can see on my mental screen in my mind images. I can hear sounds and I can feel emotions. For example, if I close my eyes, I can intentionally bring an image of my grandmother, who's my favorite person in the whole wide world. I can see her in the kitchen making candles for Christmas and I can see that quite vividly. Meanwhile, I can bring into focus what I'm hearing with that memory, which happens to be Roberta Flax killing me softly. And I can hear that in my mind. And what begins to happen on the inner environment, my emotions begin to stir. And I'm feeling the spaciousness of love and joy in my heart as I remember this really beautiful time with my grandmother. So I just cultivated in a moment's notice a positive experience by intentionally bringing an image, a sound, and noticing the emotion in my body. So that's great. With mindful awareness, you can pay attention to when you are in a really great experience and you can soak into that. For example, if you are with someone you really love, maybe it's someone, a human being, or an a beloved pet, you can pay attention and look deeply. Maybe notice how the light plays on their eyes. Maybe notice the color of their hair or fur. You can hear deeply, listen deeply to the sounds they make. If it's a pet, maybe they purr, or maybe they make little soft sounds. You can pay attention to how it feels to be with this being. Maybe you feel open and spacious, light and happy. Now, also, what happens if you are in a very difficult situation? Well, this is where mindful awareness becomes really powerful because we can remember, put your attention where you deem appropriate. Now, if I were at the dentist office, and I have a really great dentist, by the way, if I'm sitting in the seat, I have this very visceral reaction. I start to notice my hands are sweating. I'm noticing my heart starting to beat a little bit faster and my breath is shallow. Yes, a positive response would be to take a deep breath, but what if that doesn't work? I can intentionally place my attention and ground myself or anchor my attention on something that creates more of a restful experience. Now in my dentist's office, there happens to be this poster up on the ceiling of fish and a coral reef. So as he's drilling in my mouth and I'm feeling really uncomfortable, I can pay attention and focus upon that poster. I can count the fish in my mind. I can notice the colors and patterns. And when the time is right, when I feel a little bit more settled, I can bring my attention back to notice what's happening in my body, what the dentist is doing. And it becomes a very powerful experience, empowering. I can sit there and more or less be able to respond very appropriately. 
So thank you for your time. I hope that I get to meditate with you at some point. Until then, may you be peaceful. May you be happy. May you be safe. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much to the Metro West Regional Transit Authority for creating this informational video for us. Hi, son of Spilka. Thank you so much for all you do for people of the Metro West area by creating the Metro West Regional Transit Authority and particularly for all you do for veterans. I can't thank you enough. The Metro West Regional Transit Authority is a public transportation agency located in Framingham, Massachusetts, providing a variety of transportation options. We offer fixed route, demand response, and ADA services to residents in the Metro West area, as well as a Boston Hospital shuttle providing service for veterans and seniors. MWRT also offers travel training to individuals interested in learning how to use the system. To find out what is offered in your area and which service will best suit your travel needs, give us a call at 508-935-2222. See you on the bus. It's great to know that you can get around safely when you need to. But if you are home, you know that the phone is ringing more than ever these days. And there's a chance that the caller is not a friend or family. It's someone trying to scam you. The Massachusetts Office of Economic Empowerment, in partnership with People's Bank, explains how you can protect yourself. Hi, I am Amanda Moore from People's United Bank. It is a pleasure to join the Senate President's Office for this year's virtual event. At People's United Bank, we believe that the more you know about fraud and scams that are circulating, the better equipped you will be to identify those scams and ensure that you don't fall victim yourself. Scammers are cunning and resourceful, and they prey on our fears and our anxieties, especially in times of stress or times of crisis. Let's take a look at some of the most prevalent scams that we are seeing today. We're gonna start with the scam that's referred to as the grandparent scam. While this type of scam is not new, scam artists are using this as a variation of a way to exploit your fears around the COVID-19 pandemic. In this scam, the con artist poses as a panicked family member, often a grandchild, calling or texting with an urgent request to have money wired for an emergency. The caller might claim to have the coronavirus and need money to pay for a hospital bill or to leave a foreign country. And this can sound like a compelling possibility during a global pandemic. But it's a scam. Hang up the phone and call a trusted family member to verify the health and safety of your loved ones. Next, let's take a look at imposter scams. These scams have also taken on many forms. The imposter might come to your door, call, email, or text. With an imposter scam, the con artist pretends to be someone you trust to convince you to give them money. In door-to-door -door scams, often the scam artist will pose as a utility worker, such as a representative from a water or electric company. They might claim to be doing work in the area or even threaten to shut off your services. Remember, never let anyone in your home you're not expecting and never give anyone money if you do not, that you do not know. Always call to verify information using a trusted phone number. Another type of imposter scam is a phishing scam. Phishing is when you get an email, text, or phone call that may seem legitimate, but it's really from an imposter. In a phishing scam, a scammer impersonates someone to trick you into giving out some of your personal information. It could be passwords, credit cards, social security number, or even bank account information. To raise awareness about phishing scams involving bank imposters, People's United Bank has joined the American Bankers Association and banks across the country in a nationwide campaign called Banks Never Ask That. This campaign is designed to raise awareness about common bank scams to ensure that every bank customer becomes a pro at spotting phishing scams and stopping bank imposters in their tracks. Let's look at some of the most common bank phishing scams. 
Have you ever been unexpectedly contacted by phone email or text from someone claiming to be your bank and asking you to verify your account number? It's a scam. Banks never ask that. If you receive a phone call, email or text from someone claiming to be your bank asking you to verify your password, should you provide it? No, it's a scam. Banks never ask that. What if you receive a phone call, email, or text message unexpectedly asking you to verify your personal information, such as your social security number or a birth date? Do you provide it? No, it's a scam. Banks never ask that. And watch out for emails that ask you to click a suspicious link or provide personal information. The sender may claim to be someone from your bank, but it's a scam. Banks never ask that. The common theme among imposters and phishing scams is that they are looking to steal your personal information or money. They might tell you it's for charity or COVID-19 research. They'll often request funds in the form of prepaid credit cards or gift cards. This is a scam. No legitimate organization will ask you to pay utilizing prepaid cards. The best way to protect yourself is to take action. To help. Here are some additional tips to follow. Number one, if you are ever in doubt that the caller, email, or text is legitimate, hang up or do not respond. Contact the organization directly at a number that you trust. Number two, don't click on links or download files from unexpected emails, even if the email address looks like a company or person you recognize. Number three, only visit known trusted secure websites. And number four, never give money to a stranger or pay by gift card. While this might sound scary, just remember, the best protection is awareness. The more you know, the better off you'll be protecting yourself. Of course, we are all taking measures to protect ourselves from the coronavirus, but we just can't neglect our other medical needs. Sean McAuliffe, director of the Hopkinton Department of Public Health, now explains how to safely take care of yourself. The mission of your local health department is to promote community health and wellness. During the pandemic, our efforts have focused on illness prevention through COVID-19 testing, contact tracing, and quarantine management. As we better understand the illness, the risk of COVID-19 exposure in our physician offices urgent care facilities and hospitals has greatly reduced. This improvement is the product of the collective efforts of our local health boards, our medical and research partners, and infection control teams. As you have taken uh, significant steps over the last nine months to protect yourself from COVID-19, we are asking you to set uh, time aside in your hectic days and schedule the routine physicals elective procedures or consultations that you might have postponed in the past. Managing your health today may improve your health outcomes tomorrow. Schedule a date for yourself. Our show is drawing to a close, but before it does, Lincoln, Mikasa, and I want to thank all of our contributors today for sharing their insight, their expertise, and most of all, their optimism. And I personally want to thank you for spending this hour with me. Before we go, we'll leave you with some more photographs of our beautiful region. I look forward to when we can all be together again. I'm Massachusetts Senate President Karen Spilka. Thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy and be well.